and what you're currently doing in Hong Kong. Um, my name is Jeanette Slack and I'm an artist. Um, I was born here and then did a 16 year stint in London and then came back. I'm best known for being a DJ, but I also teach a piece of software called Logic X um, to kids and adults. And I also teach DJing, uh, vinyl and digital. And I also write music for ads, websites, casinos, games, and apps. So quite a, quite a lot to keep you busy. Yeah, <laughs> never a dull moment. And, and with the with the teaching that you do for for kids, is that where do you do that in the international schools? Do you do that in your studio? Um, where, where, where do you quite do a variety of places. Yeah, so I do teach at some of the international schools. Uh, that's for kids above the age of fifteen before they go to college. Um, I also design the syllabus as well, so I'm not, I just don't teach that. It's all, it's all my, my, they're my modules that I've created. Um, I also teach in people's homes and also online. And special selected students can come to my studio. Okay, that's great. And what do you spend most of your time during the week? What, what do you spend most of your time doing during the week? Is is it doing this, the, the, the teaching this with the students? Or is it producing music, or is it? Does it always change? Every, it's every juggling. Time? But yeah, I juggle between the two. Sometimes it leans more uh, to the music writing. Depends on the deadlines and the projects that I have. So sometimes, if uh, and then also, yeah, it is the teaching as well. So some of them are some of the some of the teaching. They're quite flexible with me, which is quite a blessing. Um, I'm very lucky to have that and because uh, they understand I'm busy with other projects and then because uh, a deadline is a deadline as you know yeah. <laughs> right but uh, yeah exactly but it's um so yeah recently it's been oh I can go and in delve into that a bit later okay so during the uh, current times with the virus how has your work changed and uh, what what have you been doing differently well my job's kind of split into three parts so there's the um, public performing the teaching and the music writing so obviously the public performing just in the past few weeks that's kind of that's gone down a bit uh, which so at least I've got the two other things to support me uh, so there's the teaching so the my students are between the ages of six to 74 <laughs> so that's quite a range yeah. and they all come from all walks of life and, and different styles of music. And so that's been, uh, some of those lessons have gone, have kind of dipped down a bit, but, but which understandably, but we found a way to teach online. Um, and then also the music writing, I've had my plate full, uh, I'm now writing music for Mac Cosmetics. Uh, so the, some of the adverts that you'll see, that music's done by me. And then also I've been working with a band in London uh, called Punt Guns, who are being produced by a by Andy Wright, who's he's produced pe for people like Pavarotti, Nally and Bruglia, NXS, and Annie Lennox, uh, just to name a few. And yeah. he, this is now his new project, and I've been remixing half the album for them. So I've had, uh, and that's just a few things. I'm uh, those are the highlights. <laughs> Quite a few of those things, like you're saying, is you can actually do that online. You don't actually need to see these people. I mean, you're doing doing the doing this work anyway. It's for the UK, yeah. so I've it doesn't a, really I've, it doesn't really change. I've had a self-inflicted lockdown pretty much most of my life. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so. yeah. So it's the and w when I do the DJing, that gets me out of that. Then that provides the balance. So because I don't do full time DJing, I don't play yeah. four times. It's just I, I don't see that often anymore. Anyway. Yeah, it's just special. <laughs> Actually, events. I don't think since I've never back. no, I've never no. I've never really done for, you know, I've never done full time full time. It's just always yeah. uh, special, special events. Special events. Yeah, and yeah. things I believe in and charity events and stuff. All right. How do you feel the music industry will change after the virus has affected the whole world? Yes. Yeah, so. But for I mean, obviously concerts and shows, that's that's been a major had a major impact. Yeah, massively. Well, let's talk about the plus points. I mean, the it's definitely bridged the gap between the artist and the punter, which has been wonderful. Um, there's what's been great is is the uh, live Instagram feeds and Facebook and all these other formats, Twitch. Um, and but before before the lives always been there, yeah. 
But at, but this is the first time the whole world is going through, is united through a trauma of some sort. Yeah. Um, and, and trying to be, and that is one thing that's connected everybody. So I, uh, who, who was it uh, that kind of really got the ball rolling on this uh, called Club Quarantine, uh, DJ D-Nice. And you know, you tune in to, to he started mixing uh, on his Instagram live. And as, as, as during this feed, it was just, he was like, yeah, let's try and get this up to 10,000 listeners and 20,000. And then you're in there and there's Oprah Winfrey coming into the chat feed, Michelle Obama, <laughs> you know, Naomi Campbell. And, it's, and, and you're thinking, when in time would you be watching a DJ feed where Michelle Obama is watching at the same time as you? Yeah. I mean, like, if it wasn't for this, um, and also it's just things like watching my favorite comedians like Daniel Sloss, all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's online and he's there having a rant about the virus or politics or what he ate that day. And, the, and these are normally people that you would see on a Netflix special or an HBO special. And this time they're right in the palm of your hand, in their bedroom, in their kitchen, yeah, talking about stuff. You know, and you, <laughs> or showing you like that, that about them cooking, or just having a rant about the news, and and, you, and so you're getting your the news alternative as well, but but through a comedian as well. So that's uh, that for me. I hope that never really that never really stopped. I think I, I think it will die down a bit. So I well, people say, because obviously these a lot of these people will be start touring again and mm -hmm. just doing other things. But yeah, I agree. There's there's so much content. I, yeah, I, I, I've well, in the in the office. I just haven't had time to listen and check out all of the new stuff that is oh. that of my favorite artists. Yeah, it's just so much. It's just luck. It's just it's just it's it's a moment, and that's why when you catch them, you're kind of like, oh goodness. That, that's why right now, I mean, back in January, I let you into a little, you know, bit of trivia here. I I cancelled all my subscriptions to everything, Netflix, it, it, any of those things, because those will always be there. Yeah. Right. But the, the live stuff won't. So if you if you find yourself what inspired me was because I saw people posting up going, what series shall I watch? I'm really bored. And I yeah. think, well, if you've got, don't have enough choice when you've got Netflix, then you just get rid of it, you know, because li li live is where it's at right now. And, 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 and that's, that's way more interesting. And it's the interactiveness that you can have. Sometimes I've been able to influence, you're able to go, hi, hi from Hong Kong, put a little flag and then, and then they mention they'll, they'll go, it. Oh wow, great, how are things over there? And then it kind of sways the conversation. And that's something you'd never be able to do if you're watching Netflix or if, even if you're in the audience. Yeah. You know, so it really it's really exciting. And then you're connecting with other people again and everyone's on the same there is a common ground there. Right. So it's uh, and I've been really enjoying feeds like and also seeing a window into a lot of these artists' lives. You know, like watching Fatboy Slim's daughter play. Yeah, I saw that, that was so cute, right? And also, you know, John Digweed. You know, his girls coming just you know, while he's DJing. They're coming and doing a bit of a dance in the dark. And I've seen quite a few where their dogs start running into the shot as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, like ah. get, 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 get out of the way, get out of the way. I'm busy. Yeah, yeah, and it's live as well, so you can't. It's yeah. and and that, but that it has its charm as yeah. well and then you've got lady wax and her daughter coming into the shot as well and she's just kind of like oh go over there and it's just really sweet and crafty cuts and his twin boys helping him out the stream and troubleshooting stuff and you know they're helping their dad like saying yeah give shout outs to this person and stuff and yeah it's just i think i think it's great i mean it's really that's the silver lining of it yeah. you know of, out of that's the everyone kind of the the, the light out of the out of the darkness i'd find but uh yeah i mean it's, it's it will when things go back to normal, which I know we're all gagging for that to happen, yeah. uh, just make um, make the most of this uh, yeah, as yeah. well, and also try and donate to those artists if they're asking for donations as well, even if it's just you know a coffee, you know, yeah, it's a, it's the it's a, it's a, it's a least we could do, you know, for sure. That is true. And what would you like to see develop in Hong Kong? For example, a new music school, uh, new entertainment venues. What well, what have you always wished that? Hong Kong had more community stuff. Um, we've got we're so sport for choice here in terms of venues. There's actually almost there's a lot going on until very late at night. You know, I've traveled the world and I've got you know there are certain countries you go to and everything just shuts by ten or eleven p.m. and then you know or there's not very much choice to go anywhere. So. Um, 
Okay. What was I going to? I was going to say yes. So what I really want is uh, things that you normally set up. You, you know, you do the event stuff where the commute where you bring people together from you know video, makeup, dance. All art. right. Yeah. Yes, that. I mean, there's not. I mean, I, it's Which a, I'm still trying. Yeah, we're still working on it. Still trying. Absolutely. And I know it's a really hard thing to coordinate, but I really think. Uh, and, but Frank's is trying to do this. So it's Frank's as in the restaurant. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Uh, p um, not not my mate Frank, but yeah, there's um, <laughs> the venue, yeah. But like the, on sporadically on certain Mondays, they have this AAA thing where everybody there's from the industry, you know, whether they be working in video, um, they're in bands, or they uh, set up festivals or events, and it's just really because there's not many places where everyone can congregate together because we're always working. At strange hours yeah. so it's difficult to find the right time yeah, yeah exactly so it's got to, and, and to have more of those and for everybody from from all um, from more backgrounds to, to, to come I'd love to see things like oh yeah even probably if we could do like organized paintballing or bowling together just so everyone can kind of mishmash together because we always we always come bump into each other at I only really meet other artists when I'm working and then it's a bit, and you're always in a rush, and you kind of cross through, and you know you high five each other, but you don't really get to sit down and and get to know each chat, other yeah. and have a you know. So that's why things like um, the events that you put on, and also that uh, that Franks do, which are very sporadic. And thank you so much for doing them. But more of those are great because every time I go to those, I meet so many people that I wouldn't have met. Exactly. You know? yeah. But at the same time, when we network and we find that we, we can help each other in some sort of way or uh, we build a relationship, um, it's definitely uh, a lot more of, of a, you can build more of a solid relationship at those events rather than pass through at a gig. So, and like, I'd love to see people like Soul Passion and uh, Yeti and Underground HK and Drag Jam all be in one room together, yeah. all chatting and just you know have this melting pot of people because I mean Hong Kong it is quite a it's a it is a small community here but there's still a lot of people I haven't met yeah. and I'm a social person <laughs> you know <laughs> well we, we plan to do it once 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 we can yeah we plan to do it at least once a month That's yeah and then we have also speakers of that as well yeah for sure uh, the last one we did. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty good. Mm, uh, good, good crowd of people. Yeah. Um, so that 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 is in the works. Yeah, for sure. Just and then also for more people who still haven't come to those yet, please come to them because they're great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next. So yeah. Next question. Uh, what music have you produced that people may know that you were responsible for? Well, the music that you actually made, which interesting which, question, which got, which got the most most attention, I hmm. guess, or. Well, oh. most, even most visibility or international. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll split that into two. I'll split. I'll talk about a local one and a global one. Okay. Um, so there is a pop, if, let's start with local. Uh, there is a pop star here called Sandy Langeklin, and she's she did this tour. I think it was a two-year tour. It was her Pranava tour, and in this I produced four, four so, four of the backing tracks for a section of her concert. So, uh, which was the, mo and, and most of the most of the concerts are very ballady and dramatic and amazing, amazing production. It was dancers and everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the lighting and the projection, I mean, it was just stunning, such a stunning. And, and most people, you know, when you go to a canto pop concert, everyone's sitting down and it has the cool lights and stuff and yeah. enjoying and singing along to the songs. And it's quite a, quite a, quite a, it's quite a moving experience, actually. And, um, and then, my bit comes on uh, for about I think about 15 minutes of the concert, and yeah, so that 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 parts me. That's the, this is the bit where that's the bit where everybody stood up at the Hong Kong Coliseum and then just ran to the front, and it just became this crazy rave <laughs> for, for about 15 minutes. And as soon as my last track was off, everyone sat down again and enjoyed the ballads. Okay, okay. It was it was strange, you know. <laughs> I was like, wow, the whole place looked possessed. <laughs> it was really rewarding because I did spend ten, eight to ten weeks composing these tracks. I mean, she contacted me and said she heard my album, and said I want this sound, you know. So it was great. I was given so much freedom. Yeah, I want, they didn't say please make it sound like this, sound like that. She says I want this sound that you've got here. So I, I remixed some of her old tracks from the 80s and 90s and gave them a, I gave them a bit of a revamp, 
Yeah. And uh, and of course and. Uh, and then the live band played over it as well. But it was a real, and I, it was just 10 weeks of me programming, and it's just me and the computer. So I've got no feedback. The only feedback I was getting in those 10 weeks was uh, through her music director, Anthony Lunn, uh, just giving me, going, this is great. I'm just getting emojis and explanation marks. So <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the only feedback I got. So then going to the actual concert um, and s seeing the reaction of the crowd was, uh, I, thought, I thought, phew. Because <laughs> I didn't know if the fans were going to like it or not. Yeah, you know, like did I do this justice? Yeah. But I got so much great feedback. People saying, "Thank you. I've listened to this track for 25 years. I'm so I've heard it so many times. I'm so glad it's got an updated version." So I was, uh, I was uh, glad I didn't, it, I didn't offend anyone. Yeah. So that was the. So that was. Uh, so that was that. Um, and then also, uh, global, globally. Well, recently it's the the latest Mac adverts. So, that and that's going, that's it's fantastic. The first lot were, were just for Asia and Australia, and this lot's going to be the global. Global. Yeah. So, if, if so, I'm apologize if you're watching YouTube and, you know, a Mac advert comes <laughs> on. <laughs> I, th I think I've, I've even <laughs> spun <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the, when I do. Janetis Slaka has died at the age of 42 years. Janetis Slaka was a DJ from Hong Kong. The social media from Hong Kong has announced the death of Janet Sranka. So rest in peace. <laughs>